So this is mum when she was a wee girl, smiling as, as always. This is mum on her engagement to my father uh, and she was quite smitten by him because she thought he looked a bit like James Dean, her favourite film star. And um, this one I think shows off mum's sense of humour. This is her wearing her granddaughter's um, pyjamas when she stayed over one night and quite happily posing. And this is mum out for a family meal with myself and my brother and sister. So my, my mum had been a bit unwell over the course of a couple of days. Uh, I got a phone call from my sister when I was coming home from work one day to say that um, she was at hospital with mum. Uh, mum had been falling quite a lot um, that day and had been unable to walk or to stand properly and was feeling really quite unwell. So she was admitted to hospital and they found that her blood pressure and her potassium levels were low. They thought that might be connected to a recent change in her blood pressure medication to a diuretic. She'd had high blood pr pressure for many years and um, the, the plan really was to, to try and stabilise her blood pressure and, and get her home and have a look at her, her meds as well. She was catheterised while she was in hospital because of the risk that she might fall because of her, her low blood pressure um, and she subsequently developed a urine infection. So over the course of a few days, a week, uh, we noticed her condition deteriorate. So when we were visiting her, she seemed quite confused, couldn't remember how she had got into hospital, was a bit suspicious that we had put her there, um, seemed quite irritable and just not her normal self. She's normally very pleasant, very chatty and welcoming to visitors, very pleasant and courteous to staff. So this was, was a bit out of character for her. It, it just seemed to get worse and I suppose it, it culminated uh, one day for me when I was in the hairdressers. I just had my hair washed and was sitting, waiting to have it dried and I got a text from my mum which was very garbled and, and difficult to decipher but was saying, help me, I'm in prison, I need, I need you to help me escape. So I was extremely upset to read this and, and you know, it was horrible to think that my mum was, was feeling so, so anxious and upset and confused. So um, I, I burst into tears, left the hairdressers without having even thought to get my, my hair dried and my sister and I went and spoke to staff. We had already been speaking to them through the week about our concerns um, and they were just reiterating the message to us that she has a urine infection, that can cause a bit of confusion, it's quite common in older people so we didn't really feel that they were taking the concerns as seriously as, as we would have liked, they were a, a wee bit dismissive we thought. So mum was very distressed uh, that day. Thankfully, things started to improve, so she seemed to turn, she had, did seem to turn a bit of a corner after that and seemed to get better. Her blood pressure um, began to be more stable and the infection started to clear up. So she was discharged from hospital. There was a slight delay because they discovered that she had a blood clot in her leg also and they needed to deal with that. Um, and then she was discharged from hospital and she um, spoke quite a bit about her experience in the weeks after she'd left hospital. She couldn't remember how she'd got there. She found it all a bit confusing, a bit frightening as an experience. Um, didn't really understand everything that had happened while she was there. Probably the first negative experience that she'd had of the health service. She's been in and out of hospital many times over the years and supported family members who have um, and has always been very positive about the NHS but she generally didn't feel um, that she had been that well supported while she was there and, and we didn't feel that either. I work 
within an NHS, national NHS organisation and I was at a research event and was doing a presentation on NHS complaints and one of the other presentations was about delirium and about work that had taken place to raise awareness around delirium and as I listened to the presentation and the um, symptoms and behaviours that someone exhibits when they have delirium, suddenly the penny dropped and I thought that's what was wrong with mum, although no one had actually identified it as that at the time. My mum was admitted to hospital again uh, last year for surgery on her spinal stenosis. We had been told to expect that she would take two to three days to recover from the surgery but would should hopefully be um, discharged fairly quickly afterwards. The surgery went well. Um, mum wasn't terribly well the days after it but we felt that was only to be expected. The, we had been told that there were, was a chance of some complications with bladder function due to the nature of the surgery, but that, that should hopefully clear up in a few days. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't clear up. Um, Mum was catheterised and then subsequently developed another urine infection. She um, began to deteriorate um, a bit in terms of um, her levels of confusion and agitation at being in hospital. Um, so the same pattern that we had noticed the, the previous time when she had been in hospital. Uh, we had been told by the staff that she, the sur that she was recovering well from the surgery, but that she seemed to be having um, these post-operative complications. We became increasingly concerned um, about her uh, confusion that it wasn't just normal post-surgery confusion that there was something a bit more. I spoke to the staff about my concerns that this could be delirium. Um, wasn't sure that it was being taken seriously enough. Um, by this stage mum also had constipation and I was aware that again that's one of the, the kind of risk factors for delirium. So um, I printed off the um, Think Delirium toolkit, which I took into hospital with me at my next visit. And there is a page that talks about who's at risk of delirium. And I pointed out to staff that you could tick the box on uh, at least seven of these risk factors for mum. So urged them to um, get input from someone who understood about delirium. They promised me that they would do that. Um, the next morning I rang the hospital to see how mum was and she had been particularly confused and agitated that morning and had had an outburst at the consultant during the ward round. So staff suggested that I come in and keep mum company and try and settle her down a bit, which I did. Um, I was really glad that I went in because at that point the care of the elderly doctor came to assess her and I was able to input into that assessment. He confirmed that she had delirium uh, and I found that was really helpful because it felt like there were some things that then started to move a lot quicker than they had previously and tre be treated a bit more seriously. So things like the constipation um, and the, um, the infection and the due to the catheterisation. Um, he recommended that she should be moved to a local care of the elderly facility because she no longer needed the care of, of the neurosurgery team. That took over a week um, to happen, probably nearer 10 days. Um, during that time, mum's confusion um, improved uh, slowly, um, but what didn't help was that she was moved room several times um, and that made her more confused each time because she woke up and she didn't recognise the, the surroundings. When she was um, eventually transferred to the local care of the elderly um, unit, the, the difference in the care that she received there was, was really remarkable and she, she got lots of attention, lots of support. Um, they helped her um, 
regain her bladder function and, and supported her around that. Um, and she, you know, recovered uh, so that she could be discharged. Um, the care that, that she had received, I think, was from a, a clinical perspective in the neurosurgery ward was, was absolutely spot on. But it felt to me like it wasn't the best place for her to be in terms of the delirium symptoms that she was experiencing. I wasn't convinced that they were clear about how best to support her. Looking back at my mum's um, experiences in hospital when she had delirium, um, I think we've, we've got some mixed feelings because um, her clinical symptoms were well looked after and she recovered and she got home. But um, in terms of how she was supported when she was feeling frightened and confused, when the family were, were feeling frightened and confused, I feel that that was a bit lacking um, in, in some of the, the, the time that, that she was there. For example, when my sister and I spoke to staff about our concerns about how mum was behaving and about how she just she was really wasn't herself, um, the response tended to be, it's just a bit of confusion, she's got a urine infection, this is common in older people. So it felt a bit dismissive and for us that was quite frustrating because we know the difference between someone who's a bit unwell and you know, someone who's completely unrecognisable because of the, the symptoms they're experiencing and you can see visibly that they're, they're distressed and that they're, they're frightened and you want to do the best that you can to, to make sure that they get the right care. So for us, it was, it, it was quite a frustrating experience. Um, and for mum, looking back on it, there are bits that she can remember clearly, there are bits that, that she can't. Um, but some of the things that have stuck in her mind are the more frightening experiences that she had, where she had um, hallucinations or delusions and, and was very upset about them. That was the reality that she was experiencing at the time um, and didn't feel that people were really taking her seriously around that. Um, so I suppose in all of the years that mums had experiences being in hospital and being supported by um, the NHS. It's probably the first time that her experience was, you know, less than, than she would have, have wished and, and was, was in some respects quite, quite negative. Although not, that doesn't, it's not indicative of all of the, the staff who cared for her. If, if I could make one plea to staff um, it would be that they should regard listening to patients and, and their carers and really hearing what they're saying as being as important as um, clinical symptoms, blood pressure readings, etc. I think um, listening to people and understanding their perspective is, is an absolutely essential part of caring properly for someone. So listening to people would, would be my number one plea. I think linked to that, I suppose I'm a bit concerned for, for people who don't have family members who can speak up on their behalf if they're concerned and they're experiencing these um, kind of symptoms that my mum was experiencing. It was difficult enough for my family to be heard when we were persisting and sharing our concerns with staff and I do worry about people who don't have someone to speak up on their behalf or perhaps have communi other communication challenges, perhaps mental health problem, learning disability, English not as their first language. So I would um, make a plea to staff to, to pay special attention to people who are in, in that position. Um, I suppose the other the other thing for me is that it shouldn't really make a difference where you are in the system in terms of the care that you receive. My mum's experience was that when she was in the neurosurgery ward, she was really well looked after in terms of the surgery and the, the, the symptoms related specifically to that. But when it came to the delirium, it didn't feel like it was the best place for her to be and staff didn't f feel um, to me like they were as, as confident in dealing with those kind of symptoms as they were when she was transferred to the care of the elderly unit, 
where there was a much calmer environment and staff um, seemed to have more time to spend to work with mum, to support her, to reassure her and um, to help um, her recover her bladder function and you know in a very sort of practical sense. Um, also were probably a bit more flexible about visiting and family welcoming family members than the neurosurgery um, ward was able to be. Um, and it was just unfortunate for my mum. It wasn't, wasn't anyone's fault that there wasn't a bed ready for her, but it meant that she spent a week to 10 days being in an environment that all of us agreed wasn't the right place for, for her to be.